Good morning, everybody. This is a live update on the moderate risk that's been issued from central and eastern Iowa across northern Illinois and extreme southern Wisconsin, even far northwestern Illinois and parts of southwestern Michigan could get impacted by this derecho uh, that it has already formed and is tearing across the I-80 corridor through central Iowa, about to move into eastern Iowa, and the moderate risk has been issued out ahead of it. Uh, for northern Illinois, far southern Wisconsin, eventually to northwestern Indiana and uh, southwestern Michigan, as I mentioned, late tonight. And uh, that is for, uh, for wind. There is a hatch area, a 45% area uh, issued for severe wind. This is a textbook long-lived windbag event, a squall line on steroids. It's going to pass across several states and uh, causing damage up to tornado strength, uh, even straight line wind damage up to that strong. Could easily have 90 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts uh, caused in the strongest uh, portion of this uh, bow echo. And there is even a threat of embedded tornadoes as well, especially on the cyclonic side of that bow echo. And that's going to pass right along a pseudo warm front or a differential heating boundary that's in place out ahead of this derecho. Uh, the low-level wind shear is going to be maximized along that boundary as those low-level winds are out of the due south or even a southeasterly direction uh, along that pseudo-warm front. And I think that's going to set up in the northern portion uh, of the severe wind risk uh, there. And there's even severe weather all the way down into Missouri uh, with a, a portion of this line where there's not even uh, much in the way of radar echoes. And we're going to break down this line and track it throughout the afternoon. Here you can see uh, that derecho in progress using the Radar Omega app. And it is blasting off to the east. Just incredible uh, to watch this play out uh, right now. Uh, but here you can see the bow uh, of that uh, derecho. And as I mentioned, uh, the presence of mesovortices or embedded tornadoes, QLCS tornadoes, quasi-linear convective system uh, tornadoes, as we call it, is going to happen on the uh, cyclonic portion of this bow echo. And you can already see a couple of those taking shape here on high resolution velocity imagery. And uh, this is uh, just to the northeast of the Toledo area. You can see those little kinks and wiggles uh, within the northern edge of this squall line. Uh, that's where those QLCS tornadoes are most likely to form, right along the apex of the bow echo where the most damaging straight line winds are going to be found. And then on the northern or cyclonic portion uh, of that bow echo, that's where I'm looking at right here uh, using the Radar Omega app, this high resolution velocity imagery there. And some of those wind gusts are uh, approaching 40 meters per second. That's about 80 miles an hour out there and there have definitely been, been wind gusts reported 80 to 90 miles an hour and definitely measured by radar just above the ground and the convection within this bow echo or the thunderstorm activity which happens pretty close to the leading edge of the gust front tilts it back a little bit uh, that is capable of mixing down those really strong winds that are just above the ground to the surface and that's when you get those strongest wind gusts sometimes 80 90 even 100 miles an hour can be measured uh, at the ground level and that's even capable of causing quite a bit of structural damage and the most damaging winds are going to be found uh, within these QLCS circulations on the cyclonic side of the vortex and in the rear inflow jet uh, flowing right into the uh, apex of this bow echo you can get straight line winds mixing down to the surface easily 80 90 mile per, miles per hour uh, uh, feeding in to the apex of the bow with that rear inflow jet and this thing is coming to Cedar Rapids, and it looks like Cedar Rapids is going to be near the apex or on the cyclonic side of that bow echo. So Cedar Rapids is going to get some of the most uh, damaging winds uh, from this event. Iowa City, you're going to be near the apex of the bow, maybe a little bit on the anti-cyclonic side of that bow echo, but still damaging winds, rear inflow jet winds, 80 to 90 miles an hour are definitely capable with this thing. You do not want to be trapped outside uh, with this derecho uh, approaching you. And look at these severe thunderstorm warnings all the way down into southern Iowa uh, with uh, basically a void uh, of convection down there. So those are even producing winds of severe level down into the Ottumwa area, Centerville, Iowa, uh, even well on the cyclonic side of the bow, even when there's not much in the way of convection this thing is surging and mixing down those uh, strong winds, uh, 850 to 700 millibars down to the surface. And these rear inflow jets are driven by uh, the pressure gradient as well. You basically have a mesoscale low. Uh, this is basically behaving like an MCV, uh, a squall line on steroids. You have a, a strong low pressure, uh, a meso low, uh, and the pressure gradient uh, from west to east driven by the, that meso low at the apex of the bow causes extreme winds, almost behaving like a mesoscale rear flank downdraft here. Uh, you can see how uh, the, uh, the echoes there in radar reflectivity uh, go to zero within those strongest westerlies within the rear inflow jet. 
that's behaving basically like a rear flank downdraft. If you're zoomed in on the RFD of a tornado, it looks a lot like this. If it's an HP supercell, especially with rain wrapping all the way around that tornado. And let me put this uh, into motion just to show you how rapidly it's moving into eastern Iowa. And this is right along the uh, I-80 corridor as well. Uh, the apex of that bow echo is just north of the I-80 corridor. And watch uh, on the cyclonic side, which is basically Cedar Rapids into the north, you can see those little kinks wrapping within the bow echo, especially on the cyclonic side of the mesoscale bow. And that's where those embedded tornado cyclones can form, QLCS tornadoes as we call them. And you can really get some substantial damage uh, with those circulations. So you're already getting 70 to 80 mile per hour straight line winds. And when you superimpose a mesocyclone onto that, you're already ramping that wind up even further. And you can easily get triple digit wind gusts uh, even stronger than that with this. And that's why the Storm Prediction Center has a 5% tornado risk uh, all along the apex of this bow echo. And uh, as I mentioned, that's going to be along a differential heating boundary. Here is that uh, derecho in progress right now in uh, central Iowa, moving into eastern Iowa. And note how there's that little finger that extends off to the east from the cyclonic side of the bow echo. That gives you an idea where that pseudo warm front is oriented. And that's where the cyclonic, of the bow e cyclonic side of the bow echo is going to track. And you can see that that pseudo warm front basically is pretty close to the Wisconsin-Illinois border out ahead of it. And you've got largely west to east air at nearly all levels of the atmosphere. Extreme instability is building out ahead of this. And you've got quite a bit of bulk shear uh, with this speed max uh, punching into this derecho at uh, 500 millibars. That's going to create plenty of bulk shear to sustain this convection right along the leading gust front. You want that convection to be vertically oriented at the front edge of these squall lines to, uh, to, to have a long-lived uh, squall line. And that's what uh, bulk shear like this uh, does is it maintains vertically oriented, strong, robust convection on the leading edge of a very fast moving gust front. So there's a lot of uh, strong damaging winds along and behind that gust front extending well behind the storms. That rear inflow jet is, orient uh, is located. And this convection here that's developing out ahead of that boundary, and notice that it's not, I'm annotating that image, but it's not quite showing up on here. So we'll annotate it on the Cape map. This is the wrap analysis. See if that shows up now. There it is. There's my annotations. And this little bit of convection that extends out from an appendage extending east from the cyclonic half of the bow echo, which is right here, basically that shows where the pseudo warm front is oriented. That's that differential heating boundary. You've got extreme cape off to the south of that, basically west-southwesterly winds. And then the winds bend to due south or pretty weak to the north of that pseudo warm front. But right along that warm front, that's where the wind shear, low-level wind shear is maximized. That's where the cyclonic side of the bow echo is also going to track. This is the bow echo right here. Cyclonic side meaning this half of the bow echo up here. So that's where uh, those tornado circulations are most likely to be embedded is on the northern half of that bow echo. You still can get damaging winds though on the anti-cyclonic side of that bow. And in fact, there's even severe thunderstorm warnings extending way into south central Iowa where there's basically a void of convection along the gust front down there. But you can see the extreme cape out ahead of this. A lot of juice for this derecho to feed off of. Plenty of bulk shear as well uh, to maintain vertically oriented convection along the leading edge of the gust front. As this thing's going to track right along this warm front, which seems to sag to the southeast through northern Illinois, uh, right into the Chicago area. So I see this bow echo continuing to expand just a bit. Probably will have several tornado warnings issued near the apex or the cyclonic side of it. Eventually it's going to turn southeast, likely impacting the Chicago area by this evening. And then uh, late tonight, uh, portions of northwestern Indiana, southwestern Michigan could get impacted by this bow echo. And you can tell that it's right along the leading edge of that speed max. We already broke this, uh, this map down. Uh, but right, uh, there's plenty of bulk shear, uh, wind shear between 0 and 6 kilometers to maintain vertically oriented convection along the leading edge of this surging gust front. And this is already in progress, so this derecho is already well developed. Here you can see the radar loop 
on the Radar Omega app, just showing this thing surging off to the east. Cedar Rapids, you better be in your safe place, and I would treat uh, this derecho just like a tornado event because the apex of the bow is heading right for your location. Iowa City as well, you're going to get some of the strongest winds uh, from this derecho. Radar is indicating winds well in excess of 80 miles an hour. Uh, with this rear inflow jet that is uh, passing just to the south and near the Toledo area right now. And that uh, is reaching out and about to hammer Cedar Rapids. If you're looking west from Cedar Rapids, you're probably seeing a mega shelf about to arrive at your location. And you want to be in a safe place, away from windows, probably even below ground if you can. It, it's definitely a, a good idea to get in your safe place. Winds uh, up to 90 miles an hour. Uh, stated in this morning moving east at 70 miles an hour right there too so uh, incredible rapid storm motions of this squall line winds within it are going to be 90 miles an hour i wouldn't be surprised if there's 100 mile per hour winds in this trained weather spotters have already shown 80 to 90 mile per hour winds and significant tree damage over portions of central iowa with this uh, damaging derecho and this is going to continue moving off to the east so Iowa City, you want to be in your safe place as well. Cedar Rapids, it is uh, Marion, uh, all those locations. It is about to impact uh, any minute. Cedar Rapids is about to get slammed by damaging straight line winds, possibly even some embedded tornadoes in the cyclonic portion of that line. But those are just going to boost the winds from 90 miles an hour up to about 120 if you get impacted by one of these mesovortices on the northern portion of the line. Right now, no tornado warnings are in effect, but a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings in effect across eastern Iowa as this derecho continues to surge off to the east. And I'm gonna track it here live using the Radar Omega app. You can track it using the app as well. Uh, northern Illinois, eastern Iowa, Chicago area, even southwestern Michigan and northwestern Indiana are gonna be impacted by this. So thank you, everybody. Stay tuned to my weather reports, and I'm going to keep breaking down this very impactful weather event throughout the rest of the afternoon.